an option with the Ethernet IP interface, the DYN5 servo drive can be operated as a server device for explicit messages or adapter for implicit I.O. messages. Using explicit messaging, the client has full access to the servo drive parameters as well as sending and reading position, speed, torque data from the servo drive. For implicit I.O. messaging, the DYN5 servo drive has standard data block assembly for faster data updates with the scanner. For the first demo setup, we're using a DYN5 H01 and T01 servo drive axes, automation direct PLC, Ethernet switch for networking. The Ethernet switch is also connected to the PC computer for PLC programming and servo drive Ethernet testing. For the second demo, we use an Allen Bradley Control Logix PLC and Logix Designer to demonstrate implicit, explicit, and add-on instructions. The two DYN5 servo drives are connected in daisy chain from a single Ethernet port on a switch. This Ethernet daisy chain ability significantly improves system simplicity. Up to 127 drives can be connected on the same chain. As used in this demo, the IP address of each device in the network is set as shown. When selecting and setting IP address for the servo drive, take careful consideration of these notes. The first test is to ping the servo drive to confirm their Ethernet port is active. Start by configuring the servo drive into Ethernet IP mode. Connect the servo drive to the PC and open the DMM DRV5 program. Open the DMM DRV5 program and establish communication with the servo drive. Set the servo drive into Ethernet mode and set the desired IP address, then save the setting into the drive. Repeat for all servo drives on the network. Power cycle the servo drive for the change to take effect. Check that the Ethernet switch is powered on. Check that the Ethernet network and terminator is connected to the last servo drive on the Ethernet daisy chain. Open command prompt and ping both servo drive IP addresses and check that reply is received from both servo drive. This confirms both drives are correctly in Ethernet mode. The PLC test, we can start with an explicit message get service example. All servo drive available objects are contained in parameter class 15, data attribute 1. We can start with getting or reading the diagnostic counter instance 255. Open a new productivity PLC project and check that the PLC IP address and subnet masks are set as needed. Open PLC hardware configuration and add a generic Ethernet IP client device. Set the DYN5 servo drive IP address. Create a name for the device and communication status tags. Leave everything else as default. Write a simple one rung program as shown. Each two seconds, the instruction will be triggered from two second bit. The instruction is get service 14 from class 15, instance 255, and attribute 1. Enable input data and save the data into a 32 bit array. A standard structure with all default settings can be used for the instruction status tags on the right. Compile and run the program. Each time the instruction is called every two seconds, the read data from instance 255 diagnostic counter is incremented by one. Using the same instruction format, all other parameter instances can be read from the servo drive. For example, instance 2 is the servo drive status, instance 4 is the main gain parameter, instance 29 is the motor absolute position. The same instruction base can be used to perform a set write command. For example, we can use instance 23 to write a relative position profile command to the servo drive. Using the same servo drive setup as last example, write an explicit set instruction as shown. The instruction is set service 16 from class 15, instance 23, and attribute 1. Enable output data and declare a 32-bit array as command data. A standard structure with all default settings can be used for instruction status tags on the right. Compile and run the program. Open the data view and change the command data value. Every two seconds, the relative profile command instance is called and the servo drive executes command. No other instruction is needed. Servo drive can execute position command just from one instruction. Using the same instruction format, all other command instances can be written to the servo drive. For example, instance 13 can be used to enable or disable the servo drive, Instance 14 can be used to send a speed command to the servo drive to run the motor in speed mode. And Instance 33 can be used to reset the servo drive whenever it's needed, after a fault. 
The DYN5 servo drive implicit messaging uses a standard predefined data block assembly. The output data from the controller to the servo drive is enable disable command. The input data from servo drive to controller is drive status, motor position, speed, and torque. Each data is 32 bits UD int type. Open the servo drive Ethernet IP client properties page again and add an I.O. message. Create input and output message properties as shown to match the servo drive data block assembly. Configuration data is not needed, so uncheck Enable Configuration Data. Compile and run the program. Open Data View. The implicit message created just now needs to be enabled to run, so force then send edit the message 1 enable bit. The implicit messages will start running and data is updated as shown. If the relative profile command from last example is still running, the position, speed, and torque of the motor can be seen changing as the motor moves. For the Allen Bradley PLC setup, we're using the hardware and software part numbers and versions as shown. We can start with the implicit I.O. setup first. Make sure the DYN5 servo drive is already set up into Ethernet mode as outlined in section 1. Open Logix Designer and add an I.O. module. Right-click on Ethernet devices and add a new generic Ethernet module. Configure the module to match the servo drive IP address and I.O. parameters. Give the name to the module. In this case, we'll call the drive DMM Test 18. Set the data as D int type, set servo drive IP address. Set input instance as 104 blocks. Set output instance as 101, set to 1 block. Set configuration instance to 1 and 0 blocks. Then click OK. If everything is configured properly, the module connection is established. If there are issues with the connection, a warning will be shown. Open the controller tag screen to see the I.O. data we just created for the DYN5 servo drive. We can see the four input data blocks and one output data blocks running. For explicit messaging, we can use add-on instructions to simplify the setup. We'll create a new add-on instruction from scratch in this demo, but the same AOI file can be downloaded and imported directly. An example routine file used to test the AOI is also available for download. Note the PLC must be offline to create a new add-on instruction. Create a new add-on instruction as it appears in the file folder. Set the parameters as shown. The implicit I.O. parameters are set as in previous section. The sample AOI has two explicit messages set up. One is reading diagnostic counter and other is sending constant speed command. Shown here is a message configuration for the read get instruction. Set the message type to SIP generic, service type to get attribute single, class F, attribute 1. Instance is 255 for diagnostic counter data, same as we did in slide 2.1. Make sure the message configuration pass is set to the servo drive device, DMM test 18, that we named earlier. Shown here is the message configuration for the write set instruction. Set the message type to SIP generic, set type to parameter write, class F, attribute 1. Instance 14 is for turn constant speed command. Again, make sure the message configuration path is set to the servo drive device, DMM test 18. In the PLC ladder, the AOI explicit messages can be used as shown. In the example routine file, the add-on instruction explicit messages are used as shown. This concludes the Ethernet IP demonstration video. For more information and latest manuals and documentations, visit the DYN5 servo drive webpage or contact us directly.